Warning, this video covers some topics that I highly suggest kids stay the hell away from. Dead serious. If you're under 18, stay the hell away from this video. I have plenty of others that will be appropriate for all ages, but this one absolutely isn't. You know, after years of working on this channel and having dedicated a huge portion of my spare time to discussing Pirates of the Caribbean, I feel like now is the right time to discuss one of the most fascinating parts of the franchise for me. Now, I've covered everything from lore, to the symbolism behind the villains, to the true history and mythology behind certain characters, but I think this video is a long one in the making, even though it's a bit on the short side. Now, I urge you to go back and watch my earlier villains video from a few years ago, because this could be considered a spiritual successor to that one. Today, I'll be discussing the thematic meaning behind hats in Pirates of the Caribbean. Now, you may be asking yourself, what the meaning behind the hats could possibly be? Like, they're just clothing accessories, right? And in a franchise all about curses, monsters, ships, guns, and swords, you think there wouldn't be much meaning to them. Well, let's start from the beginning. In Curse of the Black Pearl, one of the first characters we're introduced to is James Norrington. He confidently speaks about pirates as vile monsters, all while brandishing a distinguished tricorn hat, designating his role as captain. Later, we see Captain Jack Sparrow sail his way into Port Royal, wearing his own rugged-looking tricorn, much less focused on his appearance, but more so on the mere status of being captain. He only took his hat off once he saw Elizabeth was in danger, a point in which he was able to set aside his status and do the right thing. Jack got arrested immediately after, but managed to escape, hat and all, specifically requesting Elizabeth to put it on at gunpoint. He took it off in private in the smithy while he tried to get his handcuffs off, and unprepared to be seen without his hat, Jack acted in aggression and dueled Will. He specifically pointed out to Will that he needed to find himself a girl, but also brought up the potential reason for why Will might not have a girlfriend, because he's not confident in himself to make the first move. Jack also brings up an extremely important line. You're not a eunuch, are you? Once Elizabeth was captured, she was brought before Barbosa, a man with a gigantic hat that completely dominates the frame. It looks rugged, but well decorated, much like how Barbosa looks like a crazy pirate captain, but is also exceptionally smart, and is overall established to enjoy the finer things in life. Later, Will frees Jack, and Jack proclaims that he can't leave without his effects, which of course includes his hat. He cannot go on a huge adventure without his status symbol, and we see him without his hat later on when he's captured by the crew of the Black Pearl. Until this point, he was confident, leading the charge, pushing everything forward his way. But as soon as he got separated from his hat, everything fell apart. He was at the mercy of men with bigger hats. However, he does manage to defeat Barbosa nonetheless, and thus is later reunited with the Black Pearl and, as such, his hat. And notice how in this film, we never once see Will Turner wearing a hat. Along with this, throughout this film, people refer to Will with nicknames and mocking gestures in reference to his perceived lack of masculinity. Keep a pin in that. Now, we arrive at the film that inspired this video, Dead Man's Chest. One of Jack's first on-screen actions is putting on his hat, and later on, Jack the Monkey tosses his hat overboard, while he's frantically getting his crew to sail to land, since he knows Davy Jones is after him. Later on, we're reintroduced to Norrington, a man who's lost all honor, and most importantly, his hat. But most obviously of all, we're introduced to the scourge of the seas, Davy Jones. Jones is shown at all times with his massive hat, making his overall frame look far more imposing and making him look gigantic. It also has the added detail creating the silhouette of devil horns. He is literally a sea devil, a grim reaper on the waves, and a large part of his fear factor comes from his gigantic hat. And we don't see Jack reunited with his hat until he finally does something honorable, returning to save his crew from the Kraken. As for the captain that joins the surviving crew of the Pearl, Barbosa, returned from the dead, massive hat and all. This film also introduced us to Cutler Beckett, a comically short man with a large hat that almost comes off as compensation for his unfortunate stature. And notice again, we never once see Will Turner wearing a hat, along with once again being mocked for his perceived lack of masculinity. Long say say unique, simply. Well, come back to this. By the time of At World's End, we see that the world has been conquered by the East India Company. Cutler Beckett, wearing his massive hat, has executed countless pirates, as with Davy Jones hunting them down on the waves. Norrington, after doing something he perceived as honorable by bringing Jones into the command of Beckett, has also reunited with his hat, the symbol of his honor and authority. Once we're reintroduced to Jack, we see him brandishing his hat while hallucinating that he's still commanding the Pearl with a large crew. Later on, we see Jack and Barbosa reuniting since their fateful battle on Isla de Muerta. And through the rest of the film, we see Jack feel insecure against Barbosa, refusing to see him as an equal or even superior captain. 
Barbosa, with his big hat energy, scoffs at Jack's attempts at establishing dominance against him. Even Elizabeth gets in on the hat action, taking her place as the Pirate King and leading her brethren to war. When Jack managed to get the upper hand on Davy Jones and stabbed his heart, Jones fell off the edge of the Dutchman, losing his hat on the way, as with Beckett losing his hat after death. And notice how again, Will doesn't wear a hat during the entire film, and he's still seen as a weak man by all the other men in the franchise. But in the end, Will manages to marry the love of his life and conceive a child with her. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Hats are representative of manhood, specifically the size of your magnum dong. Notice how all the villains wear over-the-top hats, all trying to flex how big and powerful they are, especially Davy Jones, the guy who got c***ed out of a relationship with a literal sea goddess by a crazy raggedy bitch with poor dental hygiene. <laughs> by a, I can't even, I can't even fucking read this. The guy who got c***ed out of a relationship with a literal sea goddess by a crazy raggedy bitch with poor dental hygiene. <laughs> Son of a bitch. All of these mocking nicknames towards Will. All these inferior and weak men trying to make themselves look strong. Men who, by their own admission, lost their respective chances of finding true love and happiness. Men who hurt people senselessly. And even when not doing that, they were still motivated by greed and fear. Meanwhile, Will over here was the only man in the series to understand that protecting the ones he cares for is all that really matters being compassionate, but also showing vulnerability when needed, and above all, having a consistent moral compass were the virtues of a strong man. We can all learn a valuable life lesson from the supposed yuck. In reality, he's the guy to look up to, and in the end, being the only real positive male role model in the series. Will Turner, a man who never wore hats in his life, the true hero of Pirates of the Caribbean. Thank you all so much. If you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe. Comment down below your favorite state of corpse decay and give me your hard earned money so I can keep making insightful and valuable content like this. I'm the only person on YouTube making videos covering these important topics, so feel free to give me your life savings. Anyways, thank you all for watching. And by the way, April Fools.